Hello there YouTube, I hope you're all doing very well and having a good day. Back with another video and uh, today in this video we're going to have a look at the Behringer MDX2600 compressor and have a run through some of the functions of what it does and how we can apply it to uh, use in amateur radio. So uh, I'll show you the front and the back uh, like the last video and uh, we'll go through all the functions then. Right, so similar to uh, all the uh, other Behringer units, uh, the back panel is pretty similar, but we have uh, a few other uh, ports and stuff on this one. So we have the standard IEC power connector, and then we have our uh, inputs. Again, it's a two-channel device, so we're only going to be using one. Um, all the interconnects on this kind of stuff, I just use the uh, quarter inch jacks. Uh, no need to be using the XLRs here unless you want to. That's up to yourself. So you can see uh, for channel 1 there, you have the side chain. If uh, you want to side chain it to the send and return on your, on your mixing console. Um, not really much point in doing that to be honest. Just uh, run it through the standard input and output and uh, onto the next unit in the rack you have these operating level switches here um, you have um, minus 10 or plus 4 so I just run everything on plus 4 which is like studio level so that's the way to have those so that's the back panel so again on the front, uh, we have it that it's divided into to two channels. We have uh, channel 1, uh, which is this side. And then we have channel 2, which is this side. Again, for like a stereo application, left and right channel. Uh, you can couple them together if you want to run it mono, but not really much point. Uh, just use the one side and uh, the job will be done. So you have the uh, expander gate section. A compressor limiter section, a deesser section, a peak limiter, and then you have the same again on the second channel expander gate, compressor limiter, deesser, and peak limiter. We have our power switch. The first section we'll have a look at here is the uh, expander gate section, and uh, I have it uh, driving it from the preamp here, so you have to have something to uh, to drive it so there you go um, right so the control goes uh, off to plus 10 uh, you can kind of think of this as like the squelch on uh, on your radio and basically what we're doing with this is um, if you were to uh, be sitting in your shack with your headphones on and you just press your PTT switch and uh, especially if you're using a condenser microphone you'll hear uh, whatever noise that may be going on in the background of your shack uh, computer fans um, you know things like that you, you'll hear them in the headphones so what we can do with this is we can we can set our trigger level uh, I find around here around minus 30 to be pretty good and um, what what happens then is it pushes that noise level down uh, it doesn't get rid of it altogether unless you press this gate button if you press the gate button anything below this this line below 30 whatever you set the trigger at is completely muted if you press the gate button uh, it can be a little annoying to listen to uh, in the headphones when you have the monitor on so i tend to run it uh, in the expander mode now um the release button here when it's pressed uh, or when it's not pressed rather uh, like this it's a very fast release and uh, when you press it in like this it's a slow release so again uh, the fast release is the one I find the best and um, that's pretty much what that does so you can see this little light here when I stop speaking the red light will come on and when I start speaking then the green light comes on so that shows us that it's working and you can even see there when I pause to take a breath it goes red so a uh, little drawn here uh, a crude drawn of uh, an audio waveform so before we talk about the compression settings on the on the unit 
Um, I just thought it would make sense to do this to kind of explain it simply. So these two lines here, they represent our threshold that we set on the unit, uh, which can be anywhere from uh, minus 40 to plus 20 dB, but you'd have it in the minus range, somewhere around minus uh, 15 or, or, or something like that. Uh, that's something that you have to play around with. So, uh, the most kind of common uh, compression ratio uh, that we use for, for speech is uh, 4 to 1. Okay, so what that means for every 4 dB over the threshold that the signal goes, uh, the output is reduced to just 1 dB over the threshold. So overall, the gain and output has been reduced by 3 dB. Okay. Uh, so with compression, basically what we're at is we're making the loudest parts of the audio quieter. And we're boosting the quietest parts of the audio. Like that. So the overall effect is to make the audio denser like that and have more punch to it that's the whole object of the exercise so depending on your voice and depending on uh, your microphone and whatever else you have going on you have to play around with the ratio uh, you know four to one might work for me it could be three to one or two to one for somebody else depending on their voice so any signal then that's below the threshold below here no compression will take place at all it's it's unprocessed so um that's that so like basically what you're at you're you're lessening the dynamic range of the audio okay and we're doing that as i said by uh making the loudest parts quieter and boosting the quieter signals and we're just overall attenuating this louder part here so that's more or less what we're at now when you set your threshold what you're going to notice is when you have your headphones on and you're listening to it in the monitor is that the overall uh, volume is going to get quieter and we get around that with uh, on, in the case of the in the case of the MDX uh, 2600 we use the output control to bring it back up uh, on some units this is called make up gain so that kind of boosts the the volume of the the whole lot once you have your your compression set up uh, the other two controls that we'll be looking at when we get going is the attack which is how fast the compressor starts in milliseconds and then the release, which is how fast the compressor stops working in milliseconds. Okay, so I talked uh, when we were showing you the back there about the side chain function, and I'll just explain that to you. Um, basically, this is kind of used by DJs and people like that and they configured in the side chain so that when the music is playing or whatever uh, when they start talking the volume of of uh, the material is automatically reduced down so their voice will come over the top of it but it's still there in the background but not as loud uh right so we'll uh one other thing i suppose um you'll hear terms uh hard knee oh god can't spell hard knee and soft knee what's that all about uh, right so basically what it is hard knee is like this it's very severe compression so the compression starts all of a shot here and it's very noticeable and very severe in how it works and soft knee it's it's more gradual 
how it comes in. It's like a, a curve. It's it's not as sharp. It's not as noticeable, and it's kind of better for for what we're doing with uh, with speech on on single side bands. So uh, we're here on the compression section of the uh, the unit here. So here's the threshold that we uh, we talked about, and you can adjust that for. Uh, I normally have it somewhere around there, uh, anywhere between minus 15 and minus 20 dB, it depends. And you can see the the gain reduction is taking place here. Now, just as I was speaking there earlier on about how the output volume has decreased, if you'll notice that the, the output volume is, is a bit lower. So we can make that up here by uh, using this. Now, with this microphone not being great, it's... Uh, you can see it peaking up there uh, to zero on, on certain uh, peak sounds. So it's just that this microphone is, is bad. That's uh, that's the whole problem there. So you have your ratio here. Uh, it's set at 4 to 1 at the moment there. So you can play around anywhere between uh, 2 to 1 and 4 to 1. I uh, wouldn't really go any more than that now to be honest with you. So the attack... As we spoke about uh, how fast the compressor um, is controlled by here on this uh, this knob and this is uh, all in milliseconds so I, I'd have it somewhere just under 20 milliseconds or lower uh, and the release then I'd have it fairly quick as well so you can on this press the auto button that it'll do its own thing um, but I don't know it's just it's just as easy to set it a fairly quick uh, attack and release times so there's your output gain you can see it there's boosting up the audio it's it's really loud going out but the uh, the the aim of the game is to kind of have uh, both of them kind of showing you the the same the same kind of um, input and output or reduction and output so um, this IO meter here this is in out meter control um, when it's pressed in it, it kind of shows you more of what's going on with the gain reduction than the actual output and uh, with it released like that it, it shows you uh, that the two of them are more or less the same which is pretty much what you want um, when you're when you're compressing the audio uh, now the hard and soft knee uh, we spoke about is kind of controlled here with this button when it's out that's hard knee uh, and when it's pressed in that's soft knee so that's the the interactive uh, button on this uh, it gives you that nice smooth uh, curve so that the compression is not really severe and um, you have some other buttons here uh, tube this kind of adds a bit of warmth and depth to the audio and um, to kind of emulate a, a tube type preamp or something like that I used to uh, use that all right uh, used to have the tube button pressed in there's also uh, an enhancer button uh, I didn't use that one to be honest and uh, that's pretty much the compression section compression limiter section so um, I think I've explained it uh, as simply as I can there um, without you know going into too much detail so the next section we're going to look at here um, is the deesser now essentially what a deesser is it's just another uh, compressor but it differs that um, what you do um, you're tuning it to a specific frequency okay and you'll see there you have a male button so obviously I'm going to press that because I'm a male the last time I checked and uh, you have an in out button uh, also I forgot to say that there you have one here as well that engages and disengages uh, the compressor so once that's out um, nothing happens and uh, obviously the same here so if we engage the deesser uh, basically what we're, we're trying to do here is we're trying to take care of the sibilant sounds uh, those s words and, and uh, things like that that are in the audio that can make your audio sound very raspy and kind of rough around the the top end so basically um sibilance occurs in the male voice anywhere between four kilohertz and eight kilohertz it it depends on a lot of different things obviously your voice 
um, the shape of your teeth and uh, a lot of other different things like that so what I kind of find with mine um, mine seems to be somewhere around 6k or just beyond it so you set the control to there and if you go you can see the there's another level meter here which shows us how much it's attenuating that particular frequency so if I go it's attenuating it by uh, 9 dBs um, it just helps to kind of keep those sibilant sounds under control so uh, the peak limiter I've never used that I just always have it set to, if you have it wound around fully clockwise it's off that's the compressor um, discussed and, and what it does I, I've tried to explain it in a manner that's kind of simple enough to understand because a lot of videos where you'll be watching about, uh, you know, compression and things like that. They tend to, uh, you know, go on a bit uh, with stuff that's just way over your head and that you don't need to know. So, um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to leave them. And uh, if you like the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I don't mind either way. And uh, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And uh, we'll be back in the very near future with uh, another video on uh, one of the other Behringer rack units that I have. <clears throat> I think we might have a look at the uh, the DSP 1124P uh, next, the compressor, and kind of run through how that works and uh, what it does. So, um, 7.3 for now, and take care. This is George, EI7 Kilo Oscar. Bye-bye.